Ah, the CX Stick, the new CX40 inspired controller that comes packed in with the 400 Mini, the brand new Atari 8 bit home computer emulator device from a Play On and Retro Games. It has been a point of some contention, some consternation with some people. Now, in my review, I didn't notice these problems, and you're going to see soon that's going to make sense shortly. But several other reviewers and users, as they get them, are finding that this thing is giving undesirable results on directionals and diagonals, getting directions you don't expect and having trouble getting diagonals or holding, you know, cardinal directions. What is it? Is this thing broken or is it just you? Well, I'm going to throw some science at it and we're going to figure it out. Plus, we might have a solution for you. All that right after this. This video supported in part by... Well, in VR, I tend to sweat. It gives me an edge. The King of Nerds happens to give me an edge too. Let King of Nerds give you the edge. Bye, King of Nerds. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thanks for clicking on this video. Yeah, the CX Stick is something that I am very fond of and had no problems with during my review process. And I've been using the 400 Mini and this stick for almost a month now. It's been many weeks and didn't run into the problem. So I was very surprised when I started hearing other people saying they were having trouble getting directions they wanted, getting un, uh, unwanted directions when they're trying to go in one direction and getting a diagonal. And so I was pretty, I was pretty dubious, you know, but <laughs> I think back to remember iPhone had the antenna gate thing where they were like, oh, the antenna is not a problem. You're holding the phone wrong. Well, that's not a solution. Clearly there's a design issue. And so I was wondering if it's one of those things, am I holding it differently or treating it differently? Because clearly that many voices having a problem there's something going on there. So like so many things, I wanted to throw a little bit of science at it. And I was thinking, I need a tester tool. I need some kind of application. So I started searching around a little bit, wondering first, well, is there like a, a cartridge I can download and run on the 400 mini to test it? But I ended up digging into the Antic archives. The, remember the old magazine, one of the many old magazines for Atari where you could type in basic programs. Well, <laughs> I found, and I think it's the September 89 issue of Antic, there's a program called Joy Test to test your controllers and paddles and see if they're doing what you're supposed to do or what you ask them to do, right? Um, so you need to type in this basic program. Well, first hurdle cleared, they already have the program typed in in basic. So you can just download it. Well, that's great. But how do you get that into the 400 mini? Well, in my review, I mentioned, I wish there was a way to get basic programs in and out of that virtual disc. Well, there is. Using Altera, the, uh, the Atari 8-bit emulator, you can open up in the tools a disc manager, a disc explorer, and then open any ATR file and view its contents, just like you would if you were in Atari DOS. And when you have that open, you can drag and drop a program or a file right onto the disc. So I dragged the joy test basic file onto that disc, put that back on my USB stick to fire up in the 400 mini. Now, of course you want to try this at home. I'll give you a link down in the description where you can download that basic program from the Antic archive. Further, I'm going to give you a link where you can download the basic program already injected into the ATR file for the 400 basic. So all you've got to do is go download from Google Drive, put this on your USB stick and fire it up just like it was the Atari basic. And you're going to have this basic program pre-installed. Now, once you have that, it's time to get to the 400 and do the testing. Okay, so here I have my USB stick plugged into the 400 mini and it has the uh, the 400 basic that has the joy test injected into it, the very one that you can download. And so we're going to select that and we're going to fire up basic. Now, how do we know the joy test is there? Well, check it out. Let's drop to DOS, do a disk list. There it is, joytest.basic. That's just what we need. So we're going to load. And there it is. You want to see it? Boom. There's the whole thing that you could have typed in from Antic Magazine in 1989, but it's all here for you. So we're going to run that. Okay. It's going to initialize. <laughs> uh, and you have three options. You have a joystick. We're going to do the paddle tester. We don't need joystick testers to play with. And then the evaluator that you can actually run your own tests on. So let's start by just showing you the joystick tester. And that's really just a one-to-one. -one. Hit the button, the thing changes color. And if you move directions, 
Okay, so look, left, up, down, diagonals are... I mean, it didn't cause me a lot of heartache. Uh, and so let's uh, fire start to get out of there, and then we're going to run the evaluator, which is, again, I have a kind of a light touch, and we're finding that that's probably the thing. And we're going to, I think we have a solution for it too. So I'm going to do 25 cycles. I'm going to test myself. Now, when you run this, what's going to happen is it's going to show you a direction. You need to match it, and you have to hold the direction until it registers. You can't just tap it. So here we go. Trigger to begin. I'm going to run the entire test. There we go, 25 iterations, 100% accuracy, but you saw how I use the stick. That is not representative of what everyone is experiencing. So uh, then it'll tell you like all your reaction time and you look, I didn't get any wrong, so that's fine. So was I wrong horizontally or vertically? Now you run this based on how you use the stick and see how it behaves for you. And then it tells you your response time, which I wasn't testing my response, I was testing <laughs> the joystick. Here though, here though is, uh, look, the other day we tore apart this joystick on a live stream and we noticed there's no center post or spring or anything to hold it up. And so we remember we have heard the harder you pull the stick, the more likely you'll have a problem. Check this out. We're going to run the joystick tester, which is just your ability to just look and see how it responds. Down is down. That's great. However, because there's no center post, if you keep pulling down harder, watch what happens. Here's down. A little harder. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's kind of faking. Let's try left. Left is okay, hard left. Oh, it's hard left. Oh, and it's making contact with the ups and downs on some of those. What about up is okay, but hard up? Seems to be all right. Right, hard right. Okay, down, now hard down. Oh, yeah. And then left and hard left. Oh, so it's because we think there's a center post or a lack of a center post that's allowing the center shaft of this stick, when it's pushed hard, it deforms a bit and therefore presses down not only on the direction you're pushing, but on the associated directions too, leading to inadvertent diagonals when you're trying to go a straight direction. This explains why I never had any problem because of my light touch, but people that are a little rougher, a little uh, uh, enthusiastic <laughs> with their joystick are gonna experience that problem. So what do we do about it? Now, no surprise, as is so often the case with this amazing Atari community that we have, someone found a proposed solution and immediately posted it over on Atari Age. My buddy Jay sent me this link to uh, this article on Atari Age. I'll throw the link again down in the description for you to look at. What they've done is put a small adhesive dot in the center on the PCB to create a sort of center post to prevent false positives when you're moving directionals. And though I'm not actually having trouble with my stick right now, I can understand how you could easily have that problem if you get a little energetic with that CX stick and cause you to get those false directions. So I decided to tear mine apart and try this very fix and see how that modified my findings. I've got it all taken apart. Here is the point of contention and the suspect. There's no center post here onto which this can rest. It just lays flat on this board when it's turned upside down. And when I pull the stick very hard in one direction, see how that deforms and it bends? Well, if it keeps bending and it runs out of room to bend, not only is that gonna make contact here, but this is gonna inadvertently make a little contact here. Hence those kind of staggery on and off contacts of diagonals when you're trying to go in a straight direction. And the solution from Atari Age, genius, is to put something here to give it a little bit of a lift. And I happen to have these little self-adhesive bumper pads. These are things that I use like on the bottoms of, of uh, keyboards and stuff so that they don't float around. And I have these tiny little nubs. This is a tiny adhesive rubber dot meant to be a bumper. If we put that right there, just as they did over on Atari age. I bet we're gonna see better performance here because we're not gonna have the ability to deform this contact sheet and have it accidentally touch. So let's try it out. Now this one is a tad larger maybe than the one I saw used in the uh, thread over at Atari Age, but uh, I'm gonna do the trick. I'm just gonna get it centered here, just like that. Press it in. Mm-hmm. 
So it's raised just a tiny bit, just a little lift. We'll see, if that's too much, we can always come in and shave it. Now fast forwarding just a bit, I did a bit of a test and I found it a little too tight. So you can see, I shaved the top off of that little nub, just a little bit, take a yeah, maybe a millimeter off of it or so, because I found it a little too stiff. Uh, and plus I stabbed myself in the thumb with an X-Acto knife, but that's not a big deal. Let's put it back together again, again, uh, and try it. So here we've got it all back together with that extra bit shaved off the top and I'm ready to test it. I did a preliminary test and it was clearly not right. So it needs to be a little bit shorter. Your mileage may vary. You might have to experiment with how much of that you take off and you know, shave off and uh, don't stab your thumb like I did. But yeah, so now here's down is down, but down hard, uh, like it's not going anywhere. I'm afraid I'm gonna break it and up, let's see, up. Yeah, there's no chance of it to lean sideways. Left a little, and then left harder. Like, I can't get it to fail. So there's the sweet spot of how tall you're gonna make that center nub. I think right now mine might still be a little bit too tall because it's a bit stiff and diagonals are a little hard to hold sometimes, but you know, because really you're rolling around that centered nub now. But so, yeah, was there a problem? Maybe, depending on how you use the stick, but is there a solution with, you know, maybe, you know, 10 cents of material? I think so. So now let's bring this whole thing full circle and address the question that I posed in the thumbnail of this very video. The CX stick, is it junk or is it you? Well, is it junk? No, no, I love this stick. I've been very happy with it so far. I've been happy with it because of the way that I use it. I certainly understand and see now how someone could experience it differently if they're more aggressive with the directions on their stick. Perfectly valid. So kind of answers itself, is it you? Well, no, not really. Going back to antenna gate with the iPhone, just because you use it differently, or in reality, the way you always used a stick like this, you would expect to get certain results out of it. This delivers slightly different results. So is there room for improvement? Sure. Is it you? No, it's not just you. It has an issue if you use it a certain way and that's not your fault and there is a way to address it. If you'd like to take a screwdriver and a little rubber grommet after it, I think you're gonna be much more satisfied. Let me know what you think of this test, this program, the process of getting the basic file on, and if you try the modification, how did it go for you? Love to hear about it down in the comments. Um, until then, I'm gonna throw links over my shoulder here and here to more the 400 mini coverage that I've done. Of course, I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.